Day 147. In the Kharkiv region, there were a number of airstrikes and assaults. Today the Russians started from shelling the northern part of the Kharkiv region, with a particular focus on the Derhachi direction. After that, they launched an attack in this direction, targeting the Ukrainian positions in Prudyanka. As you remember, the Russians have been trying to soften up the Ukrainian defense in this region with their airstrikes, so this was likely their probing assault. In any case, the Ukrainians maintained control over these positions, which means that they are still able to counter Russian attempts to advance around Dementyevka. The Russians also conducted an airstrike in the Chuhuyev direction by targeting the village of Mospanove. These infrequent attacks signal that this is not a high-priority direction, which they nonetheless do not want to allow to become too fortified by the time they decide to advance in this region. Now let's see what's going on in each of the eastern directions. In the Slovensk direction, the activity is relatively low. Today the Russians assaulted the eastern side of the village of Bohorodichne, the last areas under the Ukrainian control, but by the end of the day they were repelled. The Russians also shelled a lot of the prefrontal settlements in this region. As I said previously, after almost two months of trying to break through the Ukrainian defense in this region, they decided to shift their focus to Siversk. In the Siversk direction, Ukrainian and Russian sources reported that the Russian troops engaged in fierce positional battles. Today the Russians conducted an airstrike on Verkhnokamyansky in order to soften up the Ukrainian defense that does not allow the Russians to get fire control access to the town of Siversk. The Russians also once again assaulted Hrygorivka and Ivanodarivka. However, by the end of the day, they were forced to retreat. The Ukrainians in this region continue identifying areas of concentration of the Russian forces and shelling them. A lot of shelling is recorded on the other bank of the river, which suggests that the Ukrainians are constantly trying to prevent the agglomeration of a critical number of troops that will be used to force the river. The Russian Ministry of Defense claimed that the Russian forces engaged in counter-battery actions in order to destroy Ukrainian equipment and artillery in and around Siversk. Overall, the fights in this region are very tough. In the Solodar direction, the Russians continue trying to push the Ukrainians from Berestove and the nearby settlements. Today they conducted an airstrike on Yakovlevka and Berestove, and after that, they assaulted Berestove. The fights here are still taking place. In the Bakhmut direction, the Russians also conducted airstrikes. Here they attacked from the air Pokrovske and Vershina. As you remember, the Russians managed to take the southern part of Pokrovske under their control. Right now, they are preparing to advance further and in the meantime are trying to soften up the Ukrainian defense by attacking it from the air. We should see hostilities here continue. In the southern part of the region, the Russians again assaulted the Ukrainians located inside the pocket. The first attack came from the south. The Russians managed to achieve some progress in the village of Novoluhansky, but the fights here have not stopped. The second assault was launched on the Vokhlohirska thermal power plant from the east. The Ukrainians are keeping the Russians at distance, but the fights here are also still taking place. In the southeast, the Russians seem to have resumed their offensive operation in this region. Today the Russians conducted an airstrike near New York and conducted a combat reconnaissance operation in the village of Novoselivka Druha. After short clashes, the Russians withdrew. As you know, the city of Donetsk had been under some heavy shelling, and there was a lot of news saying that the Ukrainians are targeting civilian infrastructures to force the Russians to stop. Right now the shelling has decreased, the reports on the casualties came in, and we can make our conclusions. According to the Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, by the 11th of July, the total number of civilians killed on the Russian-controlled territories in the Donetsk and Luhansk regions is 221. So 221 civilians were killed on the whole territory, not just the city of Donetsk. If the goal of the Ukrainians was to hurt as much civilians as possible, would there only be 221 killed in a month of heavy shelling? The city of Donetsk is located right on the front line. Many attacks are conducted directly out of the city, so obviously there is a lot of Russian forces inside the city that the Ukrainians are targeting. Unfortunately, in war, civilian deaths are unavoidable, especially when almost all of the artillery systems available are not very accurate. I'm also from a prefrontal city, so I'm not saying it lightly, believe me. I'm just analyzing the situation. During the same period, the number of civilians killed in the Ukrainian-controlled territories is more than 5,000, so around 20 times higher. 
But we also know that the Russians have a lot of artillery and that for every Ukrainian shell, the Russians fire 20 shells. So if we correct the total number of civilian death for the firepower, we can see that it is approximately the same as for the Ukrainians. This tells me that the number of civilian deaths per unit of firepower is approximately the same between the Ukrainians and the Russians. This tells me that both the Russians and the Ukrainians put approximately the same effort into not harming civilians. Unfortunately, as I said, deaths of civilians are still unavoidable, and as a civilian, I can tell you that we are not happy when we see civilian infrastructures being used for military purposes near us. I am pretty sure that civilians in Donetsk have the same feeling about the Russian military using civilian infrastructures near their homes, because we all understand that they are going to be targeted. But we cannot tell them to go away, obviously. And we also understand that the military also does not have perfect solutions. If the Russians held their bases outside Donetsk in order to not bother the civilians, they would not be controlling the city for long. So these are just the realities of war. They do not need exaggeration to be ugly. If you are against this war and want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols. You should also know that half of all profits from sales will go to charities that provide life-saving supplies and protection to children affected by this war. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.